Uh, hello for the millions of fans out there. Sorry I've been so long. I've uh, been moving houses and so I've fallen a little bit behind. Um, trying to get better equipment, better camera, new external mic. These really are all just trying to kind of test and learn how to do this, so it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I'm going to review a new book today. It's uh, Fata Morgana by Ken McRooney and Stephen Boyette. I'm not even sure how I ended up with this book. It must have been a, uh, a sell on Audible. Um, and so what I'm going to start doing on all these reviews is I'm going to take the first few minutes and give a general review with no spoilers, just to give my opinion in case uh, uh, for the people that uh, somewhat agree with my opinions on whether the book's good or bad and they want to re uh, read it or not. And then I'll go into the spoilers and go into the uh, attacking the book like I like to do. Um, the, the, this book reminded me a lot of like the old Zane Grey westerns. I mean, it's really a, a one-shot book. Um, he, he, he writes to the end. You know, the, the, the start of the story, goes through the story, takes it to the ultimate end. Uh, there is really no room for a continuation or a series, um, but it's kind of a fun read. It's, you know, not epic. It's uh, not Ender's Game or Lord of the Rings or anything. But, but I was able to go through the entire thing, clear the end, and even though I had some problems with it, I enjoyed it uh, as a fun story. It had some fun parts in it that made it worth, worthwhile. Um, so at, at this point I'm going to go ahead and if you uh, haven't read the book and don't want to hear any spoilers, stop listening now. For the rest, uh, rest of the time of this review, uh, there, there definitely will be spoilers. Um, uh, the title of the book you know, where it starts, the Fata Morgana. He goes and he explains that it's a special kind of mirage and uh, the Morgana, you know, from uh, King Arthur, the Knights of the Round Table. Uh, really kind of a fun idea. I don't know if it's true or not, but uh, a fun illusion, uh, a fun mirage that uh, he brings to play in the book. Um, it starts out with a uh, uh, Flying Fortress, a bomber from World War II, and going into a bombing run on Germany. And uh, it starts out feeling like a real World War II authentic, builds up the characters, the characters are all enjoyable characters, good characters uh, to read about. Uh, there's none of them really that you instantly hate. Uh, he makes them all fun, he makes them all personable. Um, The uh, whole idea behind the crew is they bring on the new belly gunner, which was from a ghost flying fortress that came back with all the dead crew and it landed. Oh, uh, you, you know, I wasn't even going to put that in the spoilers, but I might as well go ahead. It, 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 with the ghost bomber that comes back and lands itself with a dead crew. Just, I love that part. It was a really cool ghost story. Um, I, I don't think there's any real counterpart, even in storytelling from World War II, but it, it was a fun ghost story. It was something like you would really want to hear around the, uh, the campfire at the family reunion or, or wherever. Um, I enjoyed that. And then the, the belly gunners and he Indian. goes through some of the stereotypical jokes and the banter, um, like you read in so many books with, uh. Indians, then he makes fun of some of the typical banter that you read about so many of the books uh, about the American Indians and their their role in history and in books. Uh, it was it was a really good part. Uh, and they go through the rift in time, and uh, the rift is pretty cool. It's well done. It cuts a, a, a German Messerschmitt off. Is this how it cuts? in front of the pilot off and part of the wings. Uh, it doesn't sound right to me. I'm pretty sure it would, the wings were behind the pilot, but maybe it was, I don't know. I really don't know that much. Um, uh, but, but it paints a really good story going in, and, and then they, uh, the, they miraculously land you know, on another world. And it has some of the stereotypical, you know, where are we? Even though it's 
should be blatantly obvious. And I've always, it's always bothered me when books do that. You know, the, the characters are just like, what happened? What's going on? It's kind of like, I guess there is some realistic believability in that your mind would just plain deny what you were seeing. On the other hand, it shouldn't be more than a couple of seconds before you knew. Um, we're, we're not, <laughs> we went through some kind of dimensional doorway, we're somewhere else at least. So none of the questioning. Uh, so when they land, they land right in front, of course, of the enemies, you know, who's going to be the antagonists in the story's compound. And uh, they're getting ready, and then it was kind of, uh, I did like the interplay that as soon as they land, two transports come out. And, and their idea is, well, if it was friendly, they wouldn't send two transports out. They'd just send somebody to come and talk to us. So you're ready to fight. And then the, uh, the allies of the group instantly show up and they have advanced technology and they, they, they start talking to them. And part of the bug means, I don't know if I missed it or if it didn't happen, but they just started talking to them in English. And nobody questions it. It's just like, oh, what's going on? We're here to help you. It's like, really, who are you? You know, and I'm just kind of like, there should have been somebody saying, uh, why the hell do you speak English? How can we even understand you? I mean, on our own planet, you know, there's only a 20 or 30% chance you're going to be able to speak English, uh, let alone going through some kind of dimensional rift, and then all of a sudden we're speaking English to you. Uh, but anyway, they get with them. The other group, of course, does attack, and they fight them and, and get away. And they're trying to... You know, they decide, you know, which is probably standard, you know, destroy your equipment as you run away, as you retreat. And they try and destroy the plane, but they can't. They, they screw it up. Which is fine. Um, I'm still not sure why the other group would have came out and already just automatically set up and attacked them. You know, you would have thought the other group would have tried to talk to them first. You know, that was another... I mean, unless they just drop in the middle of, you know, amoral cyborgs, you know, the Borg, we must destroy you, you know, no talking whatsoever. But no, the other group, it turns out later on, was, uh, of course, if you've read the book, you know, they're the descendants of the Nazis, so they spoke German, but they also could speak English. I still don't understand why they just did come out and automatically attack. That didn't make sense, but whatever. Um... Uh, the, the group that helps them, you know, they run clear back across the crater and the, uh, there's a typhon, you know, a biomechanical dragon, you know, which is protecting the center of this crater and some kind of technology that's hidden in the center of the crater. So they go around the rim and uh, I, I, backing up a little bit, they did have a fight with the typhon coming in and actually heard it and, get, and got it to go away and they're like the only people that's ever you know, anybody even knows of that's went up against it and survived. Um, but they, they they get into the uh, into the group, and this is a deteriorating society, which actually I can believe human society has deteriorated several times. Um, look at the uh, the Indian nations here on the American continent. Um, you know, we, we don't know for sure that the conquistadors did so much to try and destroy the end of civilization. The common history that I was taught what was that they had these huge cities, but they were no longer building on the cities, they were just living in them. Uh, that they had lost whatever technology they had to build the cities. You know, I suspect that might be false. You know, they probably still had it. You know, the deterioration came when the conquistadors killed so many with their diseases and whatnot. But there have definitely been times when, uh, I believe it was uh, glass, and stained glass and different colors. Uh, the Roman Empire, you know, uh, had technologies and went into the Dark Ages. So societies can decline, and they've gone into this high-tech society that has high-tech stuff, but they've lost so much of their information and they can't fix it. And all these are farm boys that landed on this uh, fortress. And they said, we gotta make friends, so everybody go and help these guys fix their, their technology and then to move the plot along they do and it is kind of a fun little thing how 
you get the barbarian farm boys just pointing out simple stuff. As well. Did you plug it in? <laughs> uh, of course we plugged it in. It's just like, did you check the plug? What do you mean? Yeah, not quite that simple, but the farm boys helped fix everything. It was kind of funny. Uh, and they're sitting there working with these new people. Then all of a sudden they find out that the boss of these people have sent another group to destroy the plane. And they all freak out and a big fight ensues. And I couldn't help but think, when you were running away, you were trying to destroy the plane, and now you're freaking out and mad at the big boss guy that he was trying to destroy the plane. You also tried to destroy the plane. Why are you freaking out now? You know, little plot holes like that bug me in the story, but you know, it's not an epic story, it's just a fun read, so I guess you can't ignore them. Um, you know, and then the boss, you know, after they freak out that he's tried to destroy their plane, he arrests them all, he tasers them all. And then, of course, the other guys try and get them back. And, uh, the, the, the storyline had, because it encompasses everything, it had to move at such a fast pace. It didn't really have any explanation or anything. It's just everything was already set up, so they just had to show up and be in order for the plot to move along. You know, like an old Zane Grey Western. Kind of silly, light read, kind of fun. Um, uh, they get away, they head back, and they're like, we're going to get our plane, we're going to go back and fly through this time warp that's over there, and we're going to get it. And, and there's a couple of things that happen, and they, they fall in, and they see the Typhon, the Typhon's figuring out how to fight the plane. It actually has the ability to learn. It is a AI type of biomechanical dragon. Uh, but at the end, they're about to fly away, and uh, there's the Wenda, the girl that he's fallen in love with. And she's like, you know, I got to go back and help my people because your mechanic turned all their robots against the Nazis. And so I've got to go back and tell my people that it's the time to come and fight and, you know, change things. I'm just kind of like, why? <laughs> why do you need to go back, you know? Yeah. They'll figure it out eventually. It was a pretty lame reason for her to go back. But anyway, she does. And so, he, you know, part of the whole rest and the, the, the end drags on forever is, you know, how sad he is that he's lost his love that he found here in this time. And I'm just... I, I never understood why she didn't go with them. I, I thought it was dumb. And then they uh, they do some cool stuff because while the Nazis had access to the plane, they had fixed it up even better with some of the modern technology and they have fixed it robots and one of them came with. So they were able to fight the Typhon again and get and it hurts it and gets through and they fly back and they finally make it back right into the middle of the battle that they were originally at. And uh, then the Typhon comes through and follows them into the battle. And that part was cool. And then the plot twist where one of the Nazis had came through already. And I can't even remember his name, but he was one of the guys. He was the outcast with them. That uh, nobody had, everybody had assumed he was from the other place. But he really wasn't. He was a Nazi fighter pilot that, that, that had showed up. And, and, that, and those plot twists at the end, I <laughs> I should have seen them coming. I was just going along light reading, and so they did catch me, and so it was fun. Um, you know, they crashed the Typhon in, uh, and they're like, "All right, we got to go home. We've completed it. We've saved the world. We've stopped this future from happening now." And, and uh, they're going back, and he's already left his girl, dumb excuse. And they have this fix-it robot that's like, when it came through, he all freaked out and stopped working. And they're like, throw him in the English Channel. And part of me was just like, once again, why would you do that? You know, put him in a storage box, put a blanket over him, I don't know. There's no way if I had one of these super awesome fix-it Dalek, you know, helper robots, that I wouldn't at least try and sneak him back. But they're all freaking out. No, we, got, we can't tell anybody. Uh, and then they go into the epilogue, and the end of the epilogue is him telling the whole story anyway. So I'm just kind of like, well, you did tell somebody, so why didn't you just do it to start with? Um, it, a fun book. It's got some huge plot holes, but it's not an epic. It, it's not Ender's Game, so you can kind of just ignore the plot holes. 
It's, there's never going to be a sequel. There, there's never going to be a trilogy out of it. Um, so tell me what you think if you read it. Um, it. It's a fun read. It's a quick read. It only took me a day and a half or so to get through on Audible. So, uh, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks.